Hey fun fans, Nick Jr. here and we are back for our second update. Today we are going to be taking a look at team updates 2, 3, and 4 from the past week and highlight a few points that I believe are, are important for your team to know moving forward in this build season. As always, this is just my interpretation of the rules and please refer, refer to the official Q&A and official answers directly from first. In this update video, we're, we're going to cover an edit to G109, uh, the noodle agreement of 2023 officially being axed and the bumper, fa and bumper fabric uh, coated in plastic, now illegal. All of this and more coming up on this edition of FRC Updates Now. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for FIRST students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu slash FIRST. FRC Premiere Night is back on Saturday, February 25th. Submit a unique video showcasing your team's charged up robot progress by Thursday, February 23rd at First Updates Now slash Premiere 23. Premiere Night is a great way to engage with the community. Get more information and submit your video at firstupdatesnow.com slash Premiere 23. Jumping right into team update two. Um, nothing too crazy in this one, but there are a few points that I would like to highlight in this one, starting with um, the update to the section 1.1.1 of the game manual. Um, so what we see here is that uh, we get a, you know, an official statement from first saying that each alliance may stage four game pieces of their choice. Um, but one per any of the staging marks between the community and the center line, such as the game piece covers or surrounds the center of its staging mark, um, as viewed from above in the actual figure. So some clarify uh, questions, because I know there was a couple of questions in the Q&A that were directly related to that as well. So it is one per any of the staging marks between their community and center line, such that a game piece covers or surrounds the center of its staging mark. Uh, moving forward, there is a clarification to G109 that I think is really important for teams to recognize. Um, the, the full statement uh, reads that robots may not extend beyond their frame perimeter in more than one direction at a time. The extension may not reach outside the projection of that side of the frame perimeter. Um, so I know that there was a lot of talk about this uh, directly related to kickoff and then you know a couple Q&A questions follow ups. The first did come out and update a statement and added a robot H situation. So if you look here in the bottom right corner, robot H was added. Um, so as you can see, just because H extends out one side but then does cross another, that would be considered illegal. So essentially the way the rule is interpreted is that when you have a robot that projects a side, you are only allowed to extend that project projection of that side. Um, there was another Q&A that was related to this for teams that could possibly have like chamfered corners on the robot, so they would technically have, um, you know, eight sides at that point. Um, but it, the rule is to be read as if you were to pull a drawer out of it. So if I have, you know, a, a six-sided robot, each one of those six sides is considered, um, you know, be pulling out of a drawer and you're only allowed to extend at that side. So if you have a robot that is, um, you know, a regular four-sided square, but then on the corners you have, you have chamfered corners or an angled corner that allows that, um, you know, you're only allowed to extend then on that inside face, that corner of your robot that is chamfered um, would have to, would be considered a side and you would only be allowed to extend over that period and not have that full width of that. So important to know for teams when they're looking through the design and making sure that they are in compliance with the rules. Um, the next thing um, that I think is worth noting here is that in uh, Section 11 8.2, the first North Carolina state championship um, capacity was moved from 36 slots to 40 slots. So good for those teams getting to compete in the first North Carolina district as well. Uh, moving to team update three, um, there is uh, two main things that I want to highlight here that I think are important for teams. Uh, there was a statement um, that was added to G109, again, that momentary movement of a mechanism from one frame perimeter side to an adjacent frame perimeter side um, would be considered an exception. So, for example, if you have some sort of arm or elevator that is on one side of the robot and, you know, say it's on a turret, um, for example, like the Cheesy Poos in 2019, and you would swing it over that corner to that side, um, that would be considered momentary movement of a mechanism from one side of the frame perimeter to an adjacent frame perimeter side, and under my interpretation of this rule would be considered an exception. The other thing that I think is interesting to note here is the addition of G306 in the section 7.3 of the field interaction manual. Um, this was due to a response of Q51 and was added um, because Q51 was asked, and it is do not jam a charge station. 
a robot may not place any part of itself inside the charge station assembly, um, i.e. within the volume defined by its ramps and top surface as shown in figure 7.5, in an attempt to inhibit charge station functionality, and a violation of this would be a red card. So they denoted this here, and what actually is the volume of the charge station. The other interesting note in Team Update 3 is the addition of H111, and it's do not violate rules for ranking points. If you recall in 2015, there was a situation where, um, due to the nature of the game, where teams were not directly competing each other in quals, and you're ranked based on your average match score, uh, there was what was called the noodle agreement. So essentially, you know, in the last 10 seconds of the match or whatever, the human players from each side would dump all of their noodles onto their side of the field so the opposing alliance would get points. Um, and that would, you know, essentially just allow teams to boost their match score. Um, early noted on kickoff that there was a situation in which teams were correlating with the cooper uh, the cooperation node and trying to get that extra rank point in quals. And there was an important note that there was a rule that if you had scored a game piece and then um, you know removed the game piece from the opposing node, that it would be a violation. Um, and you would, the other team would automatically get the rank point. So we see here that H111, they do know, do not violate rules for ranking points. A team or alliance may not collude with their opponent to each purposefully violate a rule in an attempt to earn an alliance, each alliance a ranking point. A violation of this is a yellow card, and alliances are ineligible for sustainability and active shame bonuses. For example, if a team A on the blue alliance agrees with team F on the red alliance that they will both remove game pieces from an opposing node, violating G405, to incur only a foul and each gain a sustainability bonus ranking point. So this is directly in violation of the rules, and please do not do this as it could be escalated past a yellow card if necessary. Moving to team update four, um, there is a few things I want to highlight here. Um, there. <coughs> Updates to E701 and 702 to add the notation of outside of playoff matches. So important to note that obviously during ceremonies that are outside of the playoff matches, team members may not use power tools, use loud hand tools, and shout yell or use loud voices. This is obviously just a respect to the ceremony going on um, at the beginning of competition each day. The other thing that I think is worth noting here of highlight is that there was a statement added to G205 of the robot to robot interaction rules. And a definition of unable to drive was added that unable to drive means that because of the incident, the driver can no longer drive to a desired location in a reasonable time, generally. For example, if a robot can only move in circles or can only move extremely slow, the robot is considered unable to drive. So for example, again, this is not combat robots, is this rule, a robot may not damage or functionally impair an opponent robot in either of the following ways. Um, and that is you know, a, an important highlight here. The interesting note uh, from Team Update 4 was a line added to the bumper construction rules. And that was bumpers may be constructed as follows, and there was a line added that says plastic coated fabrics, e.g. pleather, are not compliant with this rule, i.e. that plastic coated fabrics are illegal to use. What's interesting to note here is that after a discussion through Chief Delphi and a couple Q&A questions that the um, bumper fabric that Andy Mark has sold for years, um, not the slick fabric, the regular red and blue fabric that they sell, as well as the bumper fabric that comes in the Rookie Kit of Parts is actually coated in polyurethane, so therefore would be illegal. Um, based off of this rule. So I, I fully expect there to be some sort of update to this. I don't think that, you know, the intention of this rule was to make a majority of the fabric that FRC teams use illegal, um, you know, and by any means, you know, have the fabric that comes in the rookie kit of parts be illegal. So I'm expecting an update to this, but as it currently stands, um, it is important to note that fabrics that are coated in plastic um, are not compliant with this rule and would be illegal. So be sure to check um, for our upcoming videos soon and hopefully an update to that rule in the next team update. But, um, you know, if not, or if you were possibly laminating for, of some sort your fabric, I know a lot of teams used to do that where they used to laminate their fabric um, to make it more durable. That would, I'm assuming, is illegal and is going to stay illegal. So be sure to check our next video on how that update to that rule happens or if there is one. And stay tuned for next time. And I am Nick Jr. here signing off for FRC Updates Now. Bye-bye. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for FIRST students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu first.
FRC Premier Night is back on Saturday, February 25th. Submit a unique video showcasing your team's charged up robot progress by Thursday, February 23rd at First Updates Now slash Premier 23. Premier Night is a great way to engage with the community. Get more information and submit your video at firstupdatesnow.com slash Premier 23. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.